Hi, I'm Cassandra Donnelly from Creative Passages and today I want to talk to you about ways that you can de-stress through art. There's lots and lots of different ways, but I'm going to narrow it down to two things. One is mark making and two is collage. They can be a really good way to de-stress, especially when you're doing it solely for that purpose and you're not making art just to make something beautiful or to put in a gallery or to sell. If you take that part off the table and you just allow yourself to play and have fun and just use art only for that purpose to de-stress, you're gonna find that it really helps you. What I like about the mark making and what I like about collage, oh, and what other thing, here's another type of mark making with oil pastels. What I like about that is that it just allows you to play and just release your stress and get out your emotions and it frees you up to even try new things and it might inspire you later on for um, something you want to incorporate in you know, a piece that maybe you want to sell later. But for now, when you get really stressed, sometimes you can can't make anything that looks a particular way. I know when I get stressed out, I just need to do spontaneous art making that's not even planned. In fact, that's usually my go-to. Although I do plan sometimes, but this is so fun to do. So the first type of example of mark making is a doodle. Um, I like to use Sharpie. The reason um, Sharpie is good is because if later you want to add another layer of like collage materials to this or even paint, acrylic paint or watercolor paint, you can paint even with watercolors over top of this and the Sharpie is not going to bleed. Of course you can use any type of art medium for mark making, you know, acrylic paint, Sharpies, markers, crayons, they'll all make some marks, but if you're going to add more layers, which I generally do, you need to know when you add the next layer how it's going the first layer is going to react with the next layer so the sharpies will stay in their place and they're not going to bleed um, another idea is to take some crayons and just make some marks and then later paint over it with oil pastel then you can go on further to add some collage materials then again, this can be later ripped up and incorporated to another art piece. This example of mark making is done with oil pastels, and um, portfolios are my favorite oil pastels. Well, that I've got these nice uh, gallery ones too that have a lot of colors and they're soft. I like the kind that are that are soft and very blendable. But anyway, with this, this is called Scraffito. When you layer the, the oil pastels and then you scratch into them you can see that there so this is just sort of like another doodle but i use you know the the whole paper to do it and i might rip this up um, and add it to a painting later or i might add some more collage materials first and then put up so taking this basic concept of a doodle here with mark making, here's another example. So here we have all kinds of marks, and what's especially helpful when you're trying to de-stress is doing repetitive marks. So that can be patterns, that could be shapes, like you see these little raindrops here, you see these little circles here. And this was sort of like a script writing, like intuitive script writing, where it doesn't necessarily look like anything or say anything, but it's just kind of your own marks. Um, I was going through a phase where it's experimenting a lot with that and I just kind of re-emphasized it with the Sharpies. Now this one is coffee dyed, so that's what you see different about this. I did it all first with the Sharpie and then I came back and coffee dyed this one. That's a lot of fun if you like a sort of a vintage look. It could be really cool in your journal. Here's another example of a collage. And this one's just got all kinds of papers, tissue papers, scrapbooking papers. Um, and actually, I think I did a little doodle making with the, the Sharpie like underneath a lot of the layers too. Um, here's another one that is just 
different tissue paper, oil pastels, and scrapbooking papers. I, I love to combine the oil pastels with the tissue papers and scrapbooking papers. Um, collage papers could even be your own artwork. Could be decorative papers, could be fiber papers. Here is another example that I made with tissue paper and oil pastels and then on a different day when I was actually feeling stressed I did some art making with acrylic paint so I went back over and did these repetitive lines with the acrylic paint now by itself nah, not really pretty it's not a great piece of artwork but it's satisfying to get out your emotions is very satisfying and then you think ah yeah that was how I felt uh-huh yeah so but maybe this could be ripped up and incorporated into another piece those lines you know are kind of cool okay so I did what well, no did I show you this one this one okay we took the sharpie idea we made a doodle with lots of repetition with the sharpie and Zentangle is another way to do that you could do Zentangles with sharpies and it's all just repetitive lines you take a piece of paper you won't usually work small divide it up into sections and you put a repetitive design in each section well this is sort of like that except I added collage materials uh, tissue paper scrapbooking paper oil pastels things like that so yesterday I did a workshop on stress management addressing um, managing stress and burnout through God that was the title of my workshop so we talked about how can we manage stress and I'll put a link below to that. I wanted to make this video actually so that I could demonstrate the art ideas because I threw in some art ideas um, with the collage. So that was my plan. Following my teaching slash preaching, we went to the table and we made these mixed media collages. So all we have to do is have some paper like this I like to just prepare it ahead of time so in this box is tissue paper ripped up um, jelly prints ripped up this one might have actually been sprayed too with some dress distress oxide sprays we can take some scrapbooking papers rip it up this one is scrapbooking paper of like some text um, you can actually rip up some book pages um, this was like a printable that um, I got on Etsy and um, printed it out, ripped it up. Um, just some even random like ink blobs. Okay, like I think I, my ink spilled. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? This could be something I collage with. Um, this was an example of the book page and I actually did like a jelly print on it. Um, some scrapbooking paper, uh, jelly print. This is actually another ripped uh, collage that I made just for the de-stressing. Some more like, this was just like painted papers like with acrylic paint one day and I did the painted papers to de-stress. So you can do mark making with paint as well, like acrylic paint. And I think I added some acrylic medium or, or glaze to this as well. Um, this again was like mark making with Sharpie and uh, ripped it up. So, let's see here. Some more like jelly prints. I think that's the same one. So what can I show you that's interesting? Musical notes. This was from a hymn book. Fiber papers, okay. Um, I'm not sure what this one is, but it's like tissue paper. Um, and you can see some more, you know, little scraps. Here's some just from book pages. So what we did as we combined all of those things on our paper, we just glued it on in a spontaneous manner. 
without worrying too much about where we glued it or what it looked like. And then um, I added some oil pastels. Here is this graffito again, you can see, which was the example I showed you right here where we layered the oil pastels and scratched into it. I usually like use an old pen that doesn't work anymore to scratch it in, but you could use your fingernails or anything sharp. So that's graffito right there. Um, it, it is what I did and that could be really satisfying when you're stressed out because it makes this like angst looking line that like ah oh, yeah that's how I feel and this was just an interesting piece of scrapbooking paper that had these holes cut out and I was like oh that's kind of interesting and then I, I punched out the you know the circles there I mean they were incorporated so I just pushed it out and then glued it elsewhere and some thin tissue paper I like the idea of layers this one's my favorite out of the three that I made yesterday which was that one this one and this one this one had a lot of like the book pages on it and the, the text on it um, after I glued everything I kind of went back over it with pink oil pastel just to kind of give it sort of a, some solidarity and then this one was interesting too I kind of liked how it was tissue paper but with silver on it and the in between the silver it was like clear I like that you can see through it and then we see we got the scrapbooking paper clear tissue paper we've got some old artwork um, oh and incorporated washi washi is another thing that you can use so I wanted to show you all those examples um, before I actually demonstrate how we do this. But like I said, you can just, you know, use something like markers too, just to do repetitive marks. It could be circles, it could be dots, it could be a pattern like a straight line, curvy line, dotted line, over and over again. Anything repetitive or anything just kind of absent-minded like a doodle will help you unwind. And then, like I said, with the collage, just randomly gluing the papers down is a lot of fun. And it may or may not turn out pretty, but the idea is to release the stress. And then later, you can decide to rework it into something that's beautiful. It could actually go into your journal. It could be like the, the base of a journal page, and so you can add more to it, cover up parts of it, um, and rework it. Add text, add stamps, add stencils. In fact, you can use this, the stamps and stencils in the de-stressing part too, although I'm, I'm not going to do that in my example today. Generally, I'll save that for later after I'm trying to beautify it first. I just want to get the stress out. And um, like I said, it could also be ripped up and incorporated into another piece. So next, we're going to demonstrate. So the first thing I want to demonstrate is just basic mark making. So I'm going to use this purple sharpie, hoping it works. You can make some random marks here. That gets a little boring after a while, but it is a really good way to de-stress. Now, my mark making is not usually like that, just because, but this could be incorporated later into a different piece of art. What I like to do is freestyle doodle. I start off with these general wide marks. And then later I can add more details. So I've got these lines up there. I'm going to add some more lines down here. So I guess today we're going to have a purple pen. Um, 
now I'm going to go for a little bit more detail, such as maybe some straight lines here, some dots here, some little curvy things here, Let's put some right here. Already I can't wait to add full time spells. Now before I mention regular markers like, like this, you can use that for mark making, but just be sure to know that if it's regular markers, like these are illustration markers, you're going to bleed when you add the glue water. And that could be an interesting effect all on its own, but just so you're aware of what's going to happen. Already, it feels very satisfying. This marker's slightly dry, but it's not bothering me too much. I kind of like the rough, jagged look of it, actually. And if we're getting out stressed. And usually when I'm doing these, I like to kind of make weird stuff. Like, what kind of mark can I make that has not been made before? You know? I mean, I have, like, my own general marks that I kind of do over and over. But sometimes I just really like to go for, like, weird and... Odd. I don't have to have any rhyme or reason. See, now this is looking a bit cluttered. But, got to remember, it's my stress. Today actually was a good day. I'm not too stressed at this moment. But imagine that I was. Imagine that I was feeling much more angst, which some days, you know, I do. Do some of that right over here. No. I feel like some days I'm more OCD than this, but I am ready to move on. And these oil pastels are calling out to me, saying, Use me, please, use me. So, when it comes to this, you can start off um, with the oil pastels and then your collage or your collage and then your oil pastels. The, the oil pastels can go in the beginning, in the middle, and the end, and they can even go on wet paper. Okay, it just so happens that today I want to do the mark making first, then a lot of oil pastels, and then some papers. And then I'll probably do more oil pastels on top of the papers. Now, usually when it comes to mark making, like with the permanent markers, you want to do that first, just because it's not going to mark very well on wet paper. So at the very, or on oil pastels. So you want to do this part first, or um, it will mark on top of tissue paper usually. Um, so you can, like once it's dry, you could put some marks on top of the tissue paper and on top of the, um, you know, your regular paper or acrylic paint. It'll mark on top of acrylic paint, just not the oil pastel. Now an idea is that you could then, after you get done, and let's say you want to do more mark making with colored Sharpies, you can then add some clear gesso over top of it. You kind of have to add probably more than one layer to just neutralize these oil pastels. Another idea is to use self-leveling gel because that's going to separate um, your layer there, your first layer from your second layer of oil pastels. Now, I recommend if you're going to use a self-leveling gel, it almost makes it a little too smooth for the oil pastels. So then maybe just put a thin coat of the uh, clear gesso on there. I actually tried this on um, the Scrafito and just making oil pastel on regular canvas that I gessoed 
but it's still kind of I honestly don't like using the oil pastels on canvas as much I think where I have it here oh I'm gonna show you um it, it's a lot more work to do it on canvas and I, I just so did to this so that one's not done it's just starting so let's see I'm sort of purpley pinky today so I'm just getting some color in and notice I'm not trying to be stain the lines or be very uh, neat or organized or just precise with this I'm just kind of getting some color on because I'm just trying to be stressed so I'm now doing some more marks now I usually rub it in but sometimes it's nice just to let the mark you know be raw this color right here that's a really nice color sort of a light green It's just so much fun. Like when you do this, joy starts to come. Like how can you not feel joyful when you're j doing something like this? When you kind of like saying, you know, today I'm not going to follow the rules. Today I'm just going to play and I'm going to be like a little child and I I'm going to have fun. Use some bright orangey yellow. So let's see. Maybe I should do a little scraffito on here. I'll show you how I do the scraffito. Let's add some more orangey color right there. So you can do this type of uh, task on any size paper. I happen to be using an 8x5 times five uh, and a half paper um, that's the the size journals I've been making so I might incorporate some of this into a journal later on you know it could be like the base of a page okay so I said I would show you some graffito so usually when I'm doing this graffito I'm putting down like one layer first then I'm going back over that one layer with um, another layer so I got the light blue there so now let me go back over with some dark blue okay so now I need something to write with and I gotta find what I do with my last pen here or, you know what, I have lots of old turkeys that don't work. Bingo. Okay. So we got that. That's actually my favorite device is to use an old turkey that doesn't work. So you can get as detailed with this as you want. Again, it's more mark making. So when you do this technique, you're going to get little flakes. You're going to just kind of take those off. I like how you can see the mark, like the previous mark underneath. It's so cool. So let's get, um, let's use 
Let's put some dark purple right here over top of this yellow. I don't think I'm going to scrupito the whole thing, just parts of it. So. like these little curvy things. Okay, so you kind of see how what's happening there. Get this little piece out of the way. Alright, so let's see. Do I want to add some more marks? Let's add some blue here. And usually, at, once you start doing this, the other good thing about it is it loosens you up um, so that you can maybe be more creative when it comes to making some art that you are, you know, trying to make into a certain thing, or you are trying to make make be beautiful. So now, I feel like I'm satisfied with that. So now, what I'm going to do is start adding the collage materials to it. So what you're going to need for that is some um, either Maj Paj or some Elmer's glue or acrylic medium. So here's my Elmer's glue. Here's my Maj Paj or acrylic medium. I don't generally use acrylic medium because it's kind of expensive. So you could use this straight, it'll be fine, but it tends to be more difficult to work with if you don't dilute it. So I like to pour it out in a container like this, and then add some water. It doesn't have to be precise. Half and half is good. I'm going to put these little pastels back. Okay, so now that I got it in there, I'm going to find a decent brush here. I'm going to use this. I'm going to mix it up. So you can kind of see what consistency that is. It's the thicker your papers are, the thicker your glue water needs to be. Um, by the way, you can use fabrics in this type of... Um, stress relief, but if you're going to use fabrics or ribbons and things like that, um, well, this glue will do ribbons, but like burlap, heavy fabrics, you're going to want to use like a fabric glue like Fabri-Tac. So, I'm going to use this. This was one of my jelly prints, which I think I sprayed with the stress oxide ink. I'm going to put that right here. This little piece is getting in the way. I'm going to put that right here. I like actually the holes in this piece right here, how you can see through it. That looks kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to put this piece of red down, red tissue paper. Here, and that's a knock over my glue water. Um, what's interesting is when you take another piece of collage art that you did just like this and you incorporate that. So let's put that piece like right here. So, when the heavier pieces like this, you generally want to glue under it and over it. So, I put the glue water down wherever I want it to go, lay it down. And then glue on top. Now this is a heavier piece, so this thin glue water is probably not going to glue it down. So in this case, I'm just going to dip my brush in my thicker Mod Podge and glue it down. Now I can maybe get it down if I continue to mess with it, but I did make that glue water a little bit 
to um, too thin. So notice I made a big mess there, but that's okay because the, the glue is going to dry clear. Now Maj Paj comes in um, matte or glossy. This happens to be matte. Of course, matte is not going to have a shine and glossy is. So I love this little piece that I made the other day. Um, I'm, I want to incorporate that somewhere. Let's put it right here. It kind of goes with that color right there. Let's put it right here. I'm put my glue water down. I'm going to glue right on top of it. I'm already having fun. All right, here's, oh, you can use little napkins too. I forgot to mention that. So here's a little piece of napkin. Um, it's actually, the napkins usually have different parts, so you want to kind of take out um, parts of it so you only have the, the one thin layer of it. Okay, so I'm going to lay that down here. And I'm going to use this printable. I kind of want to get that piece elsewhere. Leave that same principle, put it over here. And oh, here's the, the burlap. I, I'm not filling the burlap today, but that's something you could do. I probably do want this ribbon though, but not yet. So this piece, this is fiber paper. This is a little heavier, um, but this piece is thin, so I might go to use this glue water. I'm going to put it right here. What's nice about this type of fiber paper, which I got at the Dollar Tree, is that it'll take color like really well if I want to go back over it with full pastel. Oh yeah, let's get a little bit of print in here. This is tech. Um, I think it was just scrapbooking paper. I want a little bit of that in here. Let's put that right here. Over. And let's take it just a teeny bit more and put it right over here. And that will seem good to stick. And this piece, this is a lovely piece right here that's kind of see through it. Let's put it right here. Of that, I'm going to take another piece like that and put that down over here. See, they're pretty quick and fast to do, as you can see, because we're not getting too fussy about it, you know. Let's take a little piece of this is pink. It looks like almost purple. Put that down right here. I love it when you can see through the layers. Um, we're going to go with this turquoise piece right here to kind of match that. Let's lay that down right here. Um, and I'm going to take just another little piece of it. And I'm going to put it down here. And mm, let's take this another jelly print that I made. I'm going to put, put that right here. And oh, do I want that? I'm going to put it right here. And this piece um, was a jelly print. And I kind of really like that one. Let's 
kind of it's a little bit over. Oh, right there. Zoomy ink is a fun way to make marks too. I do have some. I just didn't think of it till now, so I don't know if I can get it out that easily. But that one will bleed on you, so you have to be prepared for that. So I just want to show you, this is really wet, okay? But even though it's wet, I can still put oil pastel on top of it. It'll still go. But you do have to be careful that it doesn't rip. So that's the only thing. But in this case, because I'm not trying to make it look like anything, I don't mind the rips. In fact, I think it makes it kind of cool, to be honest with you, because it kind of spreads out that piece. I can put more marks on here. And usually when you're feeling stressed, I don't know, your marks are a little bit more chaotic. I just like making those chaotic marks whether I'm stressed or not. You know, I'm actually kind of liking it. Um, then, you know, oil pastels are water soluble, so when you go back over it with the wet glue water, it's going to spread out like paint. And I almost feel like this is, I almost feel like it's done. Let's see, does it need anything else? Uh, not, let's see. Here's an interesting piece of uh, an old art that I ripped up. Just for the sake of it, the fact that it's my art. I haven't, well I showed you a little bit of my art. I'm going to find a spot for it. Um... Now, if I wanted to, just to kind of silk everything in more, I could take the, the regular Mod Podge and just go back over everything. Just to kind of seal it in. And I want to be careful so that I don't move the pieces. And like I said, um, once this dries, if I want, I can um, put some clear gesso over top of it or some self-leveling gel, then clear gesso, and I can further work it um, at some point in time. I'm not going to do that tonight. I can't believe how fast I did this. So... The other thing is I could I could scan this and I can incorporate this into a digital art piece too. I do scan a lot of these things. So that's moving around a little bit, but that's okay. Now And it's done. All right, I blow dried it just a little bit, but not completely. I thought it was done, but then I realized I wanted to add some ribbon. So I cut the ribbon down a little bit. I'm going to maybe, I think I'm going to add it right here. Might need some regular wash undiluted mosh podge. I'm going to add that right there. And another thing I wanted to show you is I wanted to add 
some washi. Washi is really, really fun and so decorative. Why not put a little bit of washi in here? Okay, so we're going to put it right here. Oh, by the way, washi is sticky, but it doesn't stick for long, so that's why you want to add a little bit of glue water. So I'm going to put it under and over, just like I did the paper, as if it didn't stick at all. Ooh, I like that washi a lot. Um, now I wanted to put this little turquoise piece of washi in here as well. Where do I want that at? Let's see here. Uh, that's a little too big. I only want a sliver of it right here. Okay, sliver. Well, that'll do ya. You're not sticking too well. Let me get this underneath. And this file right here, and I actually think I like it there. I'm going to put it right here. And that's it. Oops. I weren't seeing that too well. Alright, I wanted to show you what it looks like. Um... My other camcorder just does not do that great a job in close-ups. This was a lot, a lot of fun. And I made it pretty quickly, as you saw. It's just really, it's just such a fun way to reduce your stress and maybe incorporate this later into a journal page or into another piece of art. I mean, it doesn't really look that bad on its own, even though I didn't plan it out or anything. It's sort of cool. I'd be blessed, everybody. Bye. All right, this is what it looks like scanned, and I used an auto enhance just to make it stand out a little bit more. You can see all those details a little bit. This is just another example where I used the Sharpies to do mark making, and then I added some tissue paper and collage papers, and then some oil pot. In this example, I'll use a Sharpie again, and then some tissue paper and some collage papers and some oil pastels. And I went back over it again with a little bit of Sharpie. This is my last example of work making with the Sharpie and tissue paper and collage papers. And that is the end of my examples.